becoming a plus in the bowels of the building will never be seen again. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to be my own moderator. Oh. <laughs> I'm John Reese Davis. I'm an actor, and some of you know me from Lord of the Rings or Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, why don't we just start with a few questions? Who's got a question? Are there people with questions? Yes. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming. And I was curious, uh, what was your experience like working on Gargoyles? Gargoyles? Yes. I love you. Mark Bear. Yes. First of all, uh, the actual history of Macbeth in Gargoyles is more accurate than Shakespeare's. It's, it's very, very accurate. Uh, and that was one of the, the great joys of doing it. I thought, gosh, is this really good? Is this accurate? And it really was. Uh, except the business about uh, Demona and that sort of thing. And the word I named her. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, one more. Of course, you're working in a studio, so sometimes there are other people there, sometimes there aren't. But a great fun, great fun. I like I liked doing that. And it's a jolly good show, I think. Yes. Anyway, all right, another question. Good afternoon, Gimli. Uh, I watch Lord of the Rings once a year. I just got done reading the books with a friend. So since I'm dressed as Aragorn, my question to you is, what is your favorite memory of working with Viggo Mortensen? Viggo Mortensen is one of them, is a renaissance man, really. Um, Viggo can do everything. Uh, if he wasn't an actor, he would be, what well, he is actually, he is a very well exhibited photographer. His photographs sell for a lot of money. You remember that film that he did with um, uh, with Michael Douglas, where he was the uh, he he was having an affair with his wife, and they were going to kill. He got persuaded to try and kill Gwyneth Paltrow. I can't remember what it was called, but there's a shot there where the young man, who is the artist, who's having the affair with Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, we see a little bit into his studio, and we see all, a, a great array of pictures. They were all painted by, by uh, Vico. Uh, he's also a damn good poet. Um, and, and of course, he's a superb actor. But he's a, oh, such a well-rounded fellow. We found ourselves in South Island in a most beautiful location. And we all got out of the bus, having traveled three hours to get there. And we all looked around and said, wow. But nobody's going to believe that a place can be really as beautiful as this. They, they're, going to, they're going to say, that's a backdrop. Uh, and then everybody got back on the bus to go back. And Vigo and I decided we didn't want to, we didn't want to spend the, uh, the entire evening you know, traveling back and forwards to the... Uh, to the hotel, which was three hours away, so he and I decided we'd stay. We had our trailers there, but they said, we haven't got any food, we haven't got any food. And I said, we don't, don't worry about that. And Vigo says, leave it to me. So Vigo takes, always takes his fishing rod, and he's a darn good trout fisher. Uh -huh. So he's, he caught two trout for our dinner, and we cooked it over the fire and gazed at the stars. Uh, you may take it from that, that I somewhat admire the man. <laughs> Thank you very much. You also had two productions with uh, Sir Patrick Stewart back in a uh, long time ago. I, Claudius, and Four Eagles. But in I, Claudius, you got to kill Patrick Stewart. How was that? Very satisfying. <laughs>
Dr. Gimli was a candy flavor, what candy would he be? <laughs> well, something you'd have to just have more of, I think, you know. There are some flavors. You know, there are, you know, there are some flavors that are so good, you just, you get right through the packet. <laughs> and you'd never get through Gimli's packet, that's for sure. <laughs> uses a lot of forced perspective filming. Uh, being one of the tallest in the cast and being one of the shortest in the fellowship, how did it feel like working with that and like having to shoot shots in, in that kind of perspective? Well, uh, right at the beginning it was, it was really... Oh, let me explain. Okay. <laughs> the first shot of my film in New Zealand I'm on my knees, right, so I'm like this. I've got all the makeup on, it's taken eight hours. I've got the helmet on my head, and I have the axe. And it's a close-up, well, it's a sort of close-up. And I'm going, Wah! So I go, Wah! <laughs> And the makeup is ruined. <laughs> okay, back to square one then. Uh, but we had lots of tricks, and, and 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 Jackson is a supreme and superb filmmaker. He knows every trick in the book. He has the full palette uh, that a director needs to be a great director. Um, let me give you a sort of illustration. Imagine. Imagine this is a platform, yeah? We've got a platform going right across there, and on it we put a six foot eight basketball player who's now a policeman in New Zealand. Um, and I'm walking beside him now. So my head is approximately where his waist is. Right? Now we give him a big belt. We know a belt is only that big, but this belt is that big, right? And we know a, a scabbard is only about that big, but we give him one that big. So here I am, walking along beside this big belt, big scabbard. We don't see the top of him. We see his knees, and, uh, and, and uh, we see we, uh, the upper thighs, uh, his upper thigh. And I'm walking like that, talking. <laughs> and I'm just talking to him up there, and, and that gives you the illusion, because we know that a belt isn't that thick. It makes me smaller. It's an extraordinary illusion. It works wonderfully well. But there were things that still puzzled me. Um, I remember uh, sitting with Ian McKellen, watching the first of the dailies that we got to see. And there's that moment where a little Frodo jumps into the cart with with, with big Ian, uh, uh, and, and we both went... <laughs> and I turned to Ian and I said, how did you do that? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> right, is there... Uh, thank you. I, I, that's not really an answer, but I try to avoid answering questions. <laughs> right. Uh, it looks like I get to be a rock star with my phone here. Hi. Uh, I'll do the other fellow better. I was a Lord of the Rings nerd before nerd being a nerd was cool. I've, re <laughs> I've read the book every year since I was about 14, and that is an extremely long time now. I wanted to know, kind of a segue on to the last question. We hear a lot about the members of the fellowship getting together for reunions. Do you also keep in touch with your scale doubles, for instance, Brett Beatty, for yourself? Well, uh, not so much, because they, they, they really do live in New Zealand. I have a home in New Zealand, and I have a hiding behind stage. I have my New Zealand-born daughter. Um, uh, but uh, I, I don't get in touch with them. I mean, little Shah sometimes, sometimes I, I, get, I get to see 
Um, but you know, film is one of those international communities where you, you, you wander around the world and you're constantly bumping into somebody who worked with five, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, and it's, it's really wonderful when that happens. Uh, I'm sorry that I haven't a more positive thing. I'm, I'm, I run into the bloody hobbits all the time. <laughs> They are, but they are still such a close knit group of friends. It's wonderful. I, I will say that filming Lord of the Rings was extraordinary in the the level of enthusiasm and passion that the New Zealanders had. New Zealanders had uh, the cast, the crew, the director, the writers, everyone involved with that was so committed and happy and delighted to be working. And that delight really comes right through the film, I think. There was only one miserable old SOB uh, on the production, and I wore his boots every day, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, next question. Yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours in Shogun and uh, Return of the Incredible Hulk, but uh, I think my favorite role is uh, Maximilian Arturo from Sliders. What attracted you to that show, and then what caused you to, you know, obviously split? Uh, with some of the turmoil in that. Sorry, what, what, uh, what, what attracted you to the show Sliders that made you want to do it, and then obviously what caused you to want to leave? Well, I thought Sliders was a brilliant idea. I still do. I, I think the problem was the studio didn't realize the potential of it. They didn't realize that they actually got a franchise there that could have nearly, not totally, rivaled Voyager, Star Trek, the, those, those things. I think it could still be on the air. I mean, you can go anywhere in space and anywhere in time. Uh, so when one of the directors, one of the writers actually said to me, you're being very hard on the writers, it's hard to come up with ideas for this show. You know, I looked at him incredulously and said, you can go anywhere in space and anywhere in time and you find it hard to come up with ideas? What the are you doing in show business? <laughs> but I blame myself partly because I should have been more patient. But really, I don't want a darn stupid producer to say, John, all we want you to do is play the, the bad doctor in lots in space. I mean, if they told me that before, I wouldn't have bothered, I mean, but, um, and of course actors do have a certain responsibility, I mean, to play a scientist or a, 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 a you know, a, a lecturer, a, a professor or something like that, and to make them look like idiots is damaging to young people's perception of what science is. I remember being chased by a, uh, a young man down westward in, in Los Angeles, and he caught up with me and he said, look, John, I teach physics uh, at, um, at UCLA, and we often use sliders as an introduction into one of the paradoxes of, 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 of physics, and uh, I mean, you know, relativistic time dilation, stuff like that. He said, I beg you, do not, do not make a mockery of, of science and scientists because it is so hard getting young people involved in, in, in science and technology. I, I'm privileged now to be doing a little bit of work uh, with NASA. NASA is one of the glories of mankind. It is one of the... It is one of the greatest forces still of the American dream. Be damn proud of it. And, and a wonderful combination now between the commercial development of space and NASA is so marvelous. NASA does the real hard thinking and science. You know, build it, test it, put it together, test it with another component, build it, test it, make it work. That's how you get 
that extraordinary uh, James Webb telescope into space, into space, something like uh, ab about 170,000 actions that really have to take place sequentially. It, it, it is the most marvelous piece of advanced engineering we've ever put into space. And I had the privilege of meeting a man the other day who was part of the optic department, optical department. And he went in, he said, I went in at early because we had, we'd used cameras to set up the engineering so we could orientate uh, the, uh, the James Webb when we finally got it into position and open. And uh, they were just watching, you know, making sure that bits of, bits of the machine were unfolding properly. He said, but we'd, we'd orientated it on a star so that we knew roughly where we were. What we'd forgotten was the cameras were still taking images of everything around the star. So we, there was going to be a, a dump of information. Uh, and he, he said, I went in so we could just dump the information before we could actually start looking at, at, at the universe that we saw. Uh, and he said, I switched on, and it was only then that I and the people who came in after me realized that the camera was catching images of the universe that had never been seen before. He said it was one of the most exciting moments of my life. You know, and that intellectual passion is as important as any of the other passions. And that is why those of us who teach and love teaching, uh, have to emphasize the glory and the significance of, in, of, of information and, and why you younger people should really think about uh, an adventure and a life in science if you could manage it. Be very proud, I, I, I am, just to be associated with go for the lost in space doctor, the bad doctor. <laughs> Hello. I am a third generation Lord of the Rings fan. I picked it up when I was seven. Uh, thank you so much for being so true and faithful to the story as so many of us uh, were, were hoping and expecting would be able to be delivered to the screen when I saw the first uh, trailer for Fellowship, and I saw the Fellowship coming through the notch in the Misty Mountains, I knew that it was going to be right, and you, you held that vision, all of you did, and I thank you so much for all of that. Thank you. Well, I, thank you. I mean, the real credit goes to Peter Jackson, doesn't it? Because everyone knew that this film could not be made. Tolkien knew it wasn't a film. Tolkien was using the sort of the stu structure of, of, of the Icelandic sagas for writing his book. I mean, if you look about, look at Lord of the Rings, how does it go? Well, things are very nice, and then something odd happens. And then something odder happens. And then something not nice happens. And then things get a little